Welcome back to the Digilent Physical Computing Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll read some data from the potentiometer on the Chipkit WF32 and log that data to a file. Then we'll load that file back up and view the data. In LabVIEW, I'll click Help and just find Examples. I'll click Search and search for links. Then I'll open the analog read one channel VI by double clicking on it. This is the same example that we ran in the last section. So I'll set my serial port to COM4, which is the chip kit WF32, and I'll set the AI channel to 13, which is the potentiometer. We saw last time how we could read this data and display it on the graph. Now let's save it to a file. I'll press Control E to bring up the block diagram and I'll expand it a little bit, and I'll move the last two VIs over. We're going to sample inside the loop just like we did before, but then we're going to pass the data out, and once we're done, write it to a file. So I'll branch the data wire and wire it outside of the loop. This will create a tunnel for me, and by default, this would just pass out the last value when this loop is done executing, which isn't what we want. We want this to buffer up all of the samples that we get while the loop runs. So I'll right click on the tunnel and choose tunnel mode and indexing. Now each iteration of the loop, the analog data is stored in this tunnel and it'll be passed out once the loop is done executing. Now I'll use QuickDrop to place the write to spreadsheet file. I'll place that on the block diagram and we could manually wire in a file path, but if we don't, we'll get a dialog box that prompts us. So we'll leave that as it is. Then we can wire in 2D or 1D data. Since we're only sampling one point at a time, we'll get a 1D array out of our while loop. So I'll wire that to the 1D data input of the write to spreadsheet file VI. By default, a tab delimiter is used. So in between each sample, we'll get a tab character. And this is fine. That's all we need to do, so I'll switch to the front panel, and I'll click Run. LabVIEW will establish a connection to the chip kit, and just by, like before, we'll sample some analog data. This time, though, when I click the Stop button, our loop finishes executing, but you can see our VI is still running. A dialog box comes up, and we can choose where to save our output file. We're already on the desktop, and I'll save it there, and I'll call it Output. Txt. It's important to put a file extension on it so you can open it in other programs. I'll click OK, and a text file was created. If I minimize the VI, we can see the file on the desktop, and I'll double click to open it, and we can see all of our samples separated by tabs. And you can see there are tons of them here. So you could load this up in uh, a spreadsheet or uh, any other program that you want to import the data into. You can also load it back into LabVIEW to visualize the data. So I'll open up LabVIEW again and press Control N to open a new VI. Let's display that data from the text file on a waveform chart. I'll right click and choose Graph and then Waveform Chart Silver. I'll place it on the front panel and I'll make it bigger. Then I'll switch to the block diagram and I'll place the read from spreadsheet VI. Using the polymorphic instance selector, I'll select double because the data we saved was double format. And again, if we don't specify a file path, we'll be prompted for one, so we'll leave it like that. And we have the option of all rows and first row. We only have one row, so we'll say first row and we'll wire that into our waveform chart. And that's all we need to do. I'll run the VI by pressing the Run button. A dialog box comes up and prompts me for the file. I'll choose Output and hit OK, and it loads it and displays all the information on the graph. Now you can see we're only seeing the last 100 points between point 515 and 615. So let me change one side to zero. And now we can see the entire range of the graph. 
That does it for our simple example on data logging. In the next section, we'll learn how to configure the Chipkit WF32's Wi-Fi and connect it to a network. Then you'll be able to do all the experiments we've done in this series over Wi-Fi rather than USB. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.